Okay, what I'm going to start walking you through is, is how to find the surface area of a prism, and then also how to find the missing dimension in a prism, maybe like the height, width, or the length. And this example today I'm going to do is it's going to be, you're going to be finding the height. So if you take a look at this example right here, if you realize there are six sides, um, three of them are going to be duplicated right here. So if you look at the length and the width, that's your bottom. It's going to have the same area as the top. So length times width is going to give you area the, the base and also the top. The length times height is going to give you the area of the front. Well, the back is going to be the same also. So you just double it. And the width and the height is going to give you the dimensions for the side. You double it since both sides should be the same. So what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to take you through this formula. And as I said before, the formula does not have to go in this particular order. There are other ways to do it, but this is a common way that I'll do it. So I'm going to do it the length and the width. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go with um, basically here is 30 and multiply it by 25 and that is going to give me the area of the base. If I then take the length which is 30 I'm going to multiply it by the height which is 10. That's going to give me the area of the front and the back. And what's left over is the width which is 25 and 10. If you've noticed I've used 25 twice, the 10 twice, and the 30 twice. You just go through there and you check and make sure that you've done everything. Then at this point you just do your multiplication. If I remember right, 30 times 25 is 750. So I'm going to put 750 for the area of the bottom here. 30 times 10 is 300. So that is going to be for the area of the front. And 25 times 10 is 250. And that's going to give me the area of one of the sides. Now all I have to do is just go through and start doing my calculations to find out the total surface area. A common mistake some people do is they forget to double here. So 750 times 2 is 1,500 square feet. And then they're going to add the 2 times 300, which is... 600 and they're going to add 2 times 250 which is 500. When you get this total that's going to be your total surface area. So your surface area for this one is going to be equal to 2,600 square feet. So real quick recap before we go to the next example because the other one's going to take a little more algebra skills is you basically find the area of each side and you double it. So make sure you're using each dimension twice. Of the two, this one's usually the easier one because all you're doing is multiplying and you're doubling. This next one's going to take in your algebra skills. So I would highly recommend that you write this down because the other one sometimes you can get away with writing a little bit less down. But it's always a good habit to get into. So what I always have my students start off with is writing the formula. So surface area is twice the length width plus twice the length height plus twice the width height. I might have accidentally said it wrong, but we've got it correct here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to substitute in what I do know first, and I'm going to try to simplify it. So I do know that the surface area in this one is 286. Now the pictures I'm given are not always drawn to scale, so I can't always assume that this is larger, but um, i going to give you a hint. It's going to be smaller than 9 on your answer. And I like to try to give whole numbers as answers at first to see if you've done it right. So let's plug in what we do know. We do know that the length is 9 and the width is 5. I do know that my length is 9, but I'm not sure my height. So I'm just going to use an H here so I know what that stands for. Some people can use an X. Let me go over here. The width is 5, and I'm not sure my height, so I'm going to put an H there. Okay. This really hasn't told me anything here, but let me try to simplify what I can do. I know my surface area is still 286, so I'm going to bring that straight down. I'm just going to follow a line right here, and I'm going to simplify this. So if I remember right, 9 times 5 is 45, times 2 is 90. So I've got 90, and that's just this side right here. Let me try to do the other ones right here. I've got 2 times 9H, so that is going to give me... 18h, 
and 2 times the 5, I believe that's going to give me 10h. Okay, and it still hasn't given me the height yet. Ah, what can I do? Now, one of the things I could probably do right now is, is I can start simplifying some things here. I know that the surface area is two, still 286, so I'm going to bring that down. I know that the length and the width, I believe that was the top and the bottom. That's 90 square inches, I believe. Let me go 18H plus the 10H. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to combine um, your like terms here. That's usually a, an addition step right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get plus 28H. Okay, I'm at this point. All right, this takes me back to the two-step equation. So I, what I need to do to both sides is, is I need to get rid of the area that we already know. So I am going to subtract 90 from both sides. And then what I'm going to have left over is basically this. I'm going to have 196 is equal to 28H. So with that, once I divide by the 28, I'm going to get an answer for my height. And my height is going to be 7 inches. So real quick recap on this one is I basically plug in what I do know, simplify as much as possible. Once I get it simplified, then I subtract the area that I already know, and I'm going to divide by the coefficient. If you're not sure of yourself, if you go back in there and you go 9 times 5 times 2, well, that's going to give you 90. 9 times 7, that's the answer that we got, is 63 times 2 is, what, 126? And then 7 times 5 right here is 35 times 2 is 70. If I add them up, it should give me that surface area that I start off with, the 286. So this is the one that's probably going to need the most practice. Uh, there are other examples, like this is an example I quite often do in class. If you wanted to pause this one and try to get an answer on this one, you're going to get a whole number on this one if I remember correctly. All right, good luck with it.